So, thank you. Yes, as I said earlier on, this is a Green Toolkit Masterclass. We'll be led by Tamari in a few minutes. But to kick us off, as always, uh, with the year uh, convenings or online meetups, what we do is we want to check in and just find out where you're joining us from. So what we'll do is I'll invite you to check in on or join us through this QR code. And the Mentimeter code is 77351477. So I'll give you a minute. <clears throat> you can simply scan the QR code. Uh, and I see Johanna's just shared the link with us or yeah, click on the link that it puts in the code and you will be uh, with us. Awesome. Uh, for those who are joining, we uh, on Mentimeter, so you can just quickly scan the QR code or just remember the code will be displayed at the top of the screen and the slides, upcoming slides. So quick one, and thanks for those who are showing me a thumbs up. We want to know where you're joining us from. It's always nice to see this global community of young entrepreneurs. Uh, and I know you're coming from different backgrounds. So please tell us where are you joining us from? We have Indonesia represented. We have Dubai represented, Switzerland, South Africa, wow. Really a global community of young entrepreneurs. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Nairobi, Kenya represented. Um, anyone else? If you're joining, it's uh, beyond the Mentimeter. Uh, just at, on the top of your screen, you'll see the QR code. Uh, my colleague Johanna has done an amazing job by sharing with us the link. So simply just click on the link and then key in the QR code, the Mentimeter code, sorry. Lovely. Holland is represented. South Asia, East Asia, I'm assuming that is East Asia. This is my first time to interact with that. I'll need to find out a bit more on that. But really lovely. Uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank you for those of us who are uh, chatting, you know, uh, using the chat to share where you're joining us from. Thank you. We have Tanzania represented. We have Nigeria. Kurdistan, Iraq represented, really lovely. Okay, um, remember, continue to interact with us even as the session continues. Uh, it'll be led by Tamari. Tell us, you know, interact with us and let us know if uh, what we're sharing with you makes sense. But thank you all, well, uh, thank you all for joining. I think the next slide would be, ah, okay, that was it from me. Uh, my name is uh, Brian, Brian Tisoli. I'm part of the Ye community, a regional coordinator. So really lovely being here with you. Now I'm going to pass it on to Tamari, who's going to be leading us to the Green Toolkit Masterclass. Welcome, Tamari. Thank you so much, Brian, uh, for the wonderful, uh, very energetic kickstart of the webinar. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, depending where you're joining from. And I see we have so much representation. I'm very, very happy to see. Uh, my name is Tamari. I work at the ITC Trade and Environment Program as a coordinator of the different projects that are on the sustainable value chain development. And today I'll be your facilitator. I'm very happy to be here. Meet like-minded youth entrepreneurs. I'm uh, fortunately also under the margin of being youth still. So very, very happy to meet the, the rest of you as well. Let me share my screen uh, and uh, we can, I think, slowly start because we have so many things to cover, but only a couple of hours. Okay, I think now you can see the screen. Give me a second. I'll just go full mode presentation. Okay, hold on, I think it's a presenter view. Okay, I think we're good to go now. Great, thank you for your patience. So um, again, welcome to the webinar on the Green Performance Toolkit. This is a masterclass for the businesses and also for the institutions. I understand that some of you are a member of the business support institutions and I'm very, very happy to welcome you. 
So um, today we will have about two hour session. So we, we're starting at 10, a bit late and finishing in about two hours, not uh, late, maybe a bit earlier, depending on how the conversations go. So first of all, we will have three modules to cover during the session today. We will start with the first module, which is about the environmental performance and data collection. So we will be looking at the global trends um, towards environmental performance and resource efficiency. We will be analyzing some of the challenges and opportunities for businesses to improve their performance, right, and data collection systems. After this, we will have a dynamic group discussion also to hear from the participants and understand what are the challenges and opportunities that they have been encountered while working on this topic. After that, we will have a module two that will be more like deep dive and demo of the green performance toolkit. So that will be like the um, session of the, the, the main topic of the session today. And uh, we will run different kinds of assessments, create profiles, review the reports that will take about 30 minutes. Um, then we'll have a small break to give you a bit of a time to digest also then refresh yourselves. Um, then we will go into an exercise, so that will be um, also something very interactive that you will need, need to do. So I think that's good already to prepare yourselves for that. That will be like a group exercise, or also can be done individually, right? And it's good if you're in front of your computer so that you can access the tool better. That will take about 30 minutes. Uh, then we will go to module three. That will be about scenarios of how business support institutions and other practitioners like businesses can deploy the tool. Um, then we will have quick exchange, also information sharing, brainstorming session. And then finally, we will wrap up and uh, we will introduce the next steps. So that's our agenda today. I look forward to a very interactive session. It's not going to be only me speaking, but obviously it will be a very, very interactive. So we would love to hear from you and also make this webinar as much as interactive as possible. So I think without further ado, we can uh, dive into content. Um, so first thing, thing, first things first, I guess, let's first um, talk about environmental performance and data collection. So let's look at the global trend, right? So the first things that you see on the screen is basically the overview of the demand on environmental resources that are that are in the world. So we are here from different countries, but basically we are part of the same ecosystem, part of the same uh, resource um, base, so to say. So it's important to understand not only what's happening in our own ecosystems and you know in the geographies, but also what is happening globally. And here you see this um, these statistics that uh, that is from Global Material Flow Database from UNEP, which is your United Nations Environment Program, and it shows the material flow from 1970 to 2020, right? So it's a quite large period of time and we have different materials here that are uh, basically important, super, super important for any kind of business production, right? So it has shown, this graph is showing that basically the global extraction of materials, which is biomass, fossil fuels, metal ores, and not metallic minerals, it has grown from 30 billion tons, which you see in 1970s, to 95 billion tons in 2020. It's a huge increase and it is increasing. If you see from year to year, maybe the increase is not that high, but you can still see that there is a steady growth, maybe a, like about two, three percent, right, from year to year. So this is something like that, like uh, gives us a good overview. Okay, so what is happening? How is the like material extraction? How do we consume the different environmental resources? And you see, this is growing, right? Going to the next slide, I would like to show a connection. How this resource extraction and also resource consumption is driving basically the triple planet planetary crisis that we're facing today. So basically there is a like a formula given on the screen, but of course this is like very simple visualization and there are much more calculations around it. But in order to understand the impact of our activities and our resource consumption on the planet, on the earth resources, the scientists, they take the number of population and this is multiplied on the consumption and also production, right? Because we use lots of materials for producing different goods and products. And also it's calculated, it's multiplied on the technology slash processes. And this is how they uh, calculate the impact of the material resource consumption on the earth. 
So another source from Global Footprint Network, it actually claims that we are currently using the renewable sources of a bit more than one earth. So we are using more than actually we can produce. So if we continue to consume the resources the way we are doing now, it's basically we won't have enough resources to be able to sustain ourselves. And I think that's where sustainable development comes into place because as a humankind, we are aware of these challenges and we are trying to somehow mitigate them. But speaking more of the challenges, I think that would be good also to think about like, what are some of the environmental impacts that can be caused by environmental resource excessive consumption, right? So there are three big things on the screen and I'm sure that all of you are aware of this, this climate change, biodiversity loss and pollution. And you see that all of them, they are somehow linked and connected with each other. And it could be that one of them is even a cause of another one, right? Because for example, climate change. Climate change has many causes, but it mainly it's mainly caused with the fossil fuel consumption. And we have seen that the extraction of fossil fuel has been increasing over time, right? But the reason why do we need fossil fuels? We need fossil fuels to create energy that we need for every economic activity, right? So in the end, like this, everything is connected to each other like a chain, and then it affects, like if you make a change in one thing, then this change is somehow tripled down, like connected and causing maybe another change. For example, climate change, obviously causing in its own the biodiversity loss, right? Because some of the species of animals of plants, they cannot tolerate, right, some of the, um, things that are going in the climate, so they cannot be adaptable, so it's causing some of the biodiversity loss. Then, of course, the pollution. Pollution is something that is caused by both of them, also other economic activities or waste generation, and this is also affecting and further enhancing the biodiversity loss. So as you see, these challenges, basically, maybe they have like a, some, some sort of like a common base, like a creation and the factors that further encourage them or make them worsen. But then somehow they also like connect to each other in a way. But these are the kind of things that we are all aware of when we are really trying to mitigate the impact and understand what are the things that we can do to minimize the resource consumption, but not only minimize, but also optimize, right? Because yes, we do consume a lot of resources, but we also are aware that we have to be more conscious about it as an individual, as a business representative, as a business support institution representative, right? And we try to mitigate this, these challenges as well. So here on the screen, I would like to show you what are the current trends globally that indicate towards environmental performance. And obviously these trends may be present in one country more than in another one, but these are some of the global trends that are there and basically that are coming basically in, in also in other countries that might not be present at the moment. So first of all, there is increasing regulatory pressure and consumer demand for sustainable products and services, right? And um, this pressure comes from regulations, from policies that the governments are adopting and different regulatory bodies, but also consumers, because they would like to understand um, if the, the products that they are consuming, if they are made in a sustainable manner, and really they make like a choice going to the supermarket, looking at the label, understanding what is their carbon footprint of the product that is made and then making a decision about it. So it proves that the, there is a business case for, for being resource efficient. Um, then obviously there is a growing importance of environmental stewardship and corporate social responsibility. There we, we see that the circular economy is something that is a new trend that is coming, becoming more and more powerful, more and more widespread and common. And the there is like important principles of the economy. It means to minimize waste and then maximize resource efficiency. Um, there is lots of emphasis on the carbon footprint reduction, right? And adopting in climate mitigation, uh, mitigation or resilience strategies, right? And we've seen particularly in those geographies that are most affected with the negative impacts of the climate change. And we also see that in many countries, there is a rise of green technologies. So this green technologies is something that is like supporting the creation of alternative energy sources so that somehow to transition from fossil fuels that I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation and then to be relied on the other, um, other alternative energy sources. 
So these are some of the trends that are there globally when we talk about environmental performance. And um, uh, speaking of resource efficiency, I would like to give you a small examples or like an overview of um, what, the, what do we exactly mean when we speak about resource efficiency and environmental performance, right? So mostly we will be looking at the like four areas, right? Water, energy, chemicals, and waste. And um, when we talk about resource efficiency in, in, for example, in the area of water, that would mean consumption, uh, reducing water, reducing water consumption in industrial processes, right? And making sure that there are no water leakages in the pipe systems and um, the equipments consume them like uh, efficiently as, as well. It might sound uh, very simple, but uh, we, through our experience working with different businesses all around the world, it shows that actually it's one of the most common challenges or some of the common challenges that the businesses have. When we speak about energy, resource efficiency could be uh, linked to assessing and optimizing energy consumption in terms of machinery use, generators, equipment, and so on. When it comes to chemicals, it means using the right chemicals uh, in industrial processes and right amounts, not on the right chemicals, but also right amounts. And then when it comes to waste, right, um, in order to avoid the pollution, uh, it could be reducing, reusing and recycling the waste products to minimize the impact on the environment and also to explore the new business opportunities. Um, so here, I would like to show, make a connection. How does the resource efficiency actually connect to the climate action? And how businesses, by being resource efficient, they can actually contribute to the climate change mitigation and adaptation, right? So first of all, um, <coughs> excuse me. Resource efficiency, it drives circular economy practices. And circular economy practices, by default, they emphasize the reduction, reuse, and recycling of materials, reducing carbon emissions and raw material extraction. Then investing in circularity, it has positive impacts. Not only it could cut the CO2 emissions, but it could also generate new economic opportunities like job creations. For example, here we have statistics from another source. We uh, rate of Grasslands. Excuse me. Um, that is uh, from WBCSD. I think it was Sustainable Business Council that says basically that recycling materials can create more jobs, 100 jobs per 10,000 tons compared to two jobs from landfilling or incineration. So you see that quite not only it has a positive environment impact, but also it has positive economic impact as well. And obviously that's because also resource efficient practices, they often mean integrate renewable energy like solar or wind power into the operations. And that also contributes the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. So as you see, there is a clear connection between resource efficiency and also making a climate action as a business. Right, going to the next slide, I would like to show you a, like, um, what does it mean for a business to be a resource efficient in terms of a business management perspective, right? So first of all, it shows the opportunity to manage risks that are operational, that can be regulatory, and that can be reputational risks, and identify new business opportunities. Managing risks is because if the business is consuming too much energy, too much resources, this is causing the, a lot of inefficiencies, not only for environmental resources, but also for the financial resources, right? Then in addition to that, there is uh, obviously damage of reputation because lots of consumers are looking at the products that are made in a sustainable manner. So that the, if there is a risk that the business is compliant with the current demands, not only from the consumer side, but also from the government side, because we see that many, many countries that are putting regulations in place that further encourage sustainability. So there is a risk on that end. Then obviously risk from the international buyers as well, because lots of businesses, they depend on the export opportunities. But as buyers are looking into sustainability, as, as business is not compliant with this, there is a risk that, you know, there, there could be the business could be left out of business. Um, and obviously, if we manage these risks by being resource efficient, we can translate this as a business into a new business opportunity, right? 
first of all, we can the business can save lots of money and resources, right, to become more resource efficient. Um, could be better compliant with regulatory and voluntary standards, and also improve reputation and continuously communicate about the sustainability effort that the business is doing that is positively impacting overall the business generation and also benefit. And finally, last but a very important aspect is funding, because a lot of investors actually are looking into the green business opportunities, sustainable business models. So business is further looking into that aspect it basically creates more opportunity, opens more windows for them to be able to access that green or climate finance. So going to the next slide, I would like to show you like examples of what does resource efficiency mean in the context of business. And here is the examples from water and energy. When you look at the factory operations, um, it, water efficiency can actually mean like actually fixing water leakages from pipes and machines. It's very simple, but the, I can tell you that's a challenge of, of many, many businesses around the world. Or for example, recycle of light polluted water from wet processing machines, right? Or for example, energy. In the case of energy, resource efficiency could refer to recover from the boiler system, or it could refer to, <coughs> excuse me, saving from insulating steam supply, condensate and hot water lines. We'll be able to dive into this in a bit better. I think for the sake of time, we'll be uh, going to the next slide and show you um, how small changes make a big impact, right? Here, I have information from, I have from our program. We have a coaching program in a trading environment, which is called resource efficiency and circular production. And we have implemented this coaching programs in uh, more than 15 countries with more than 200 MSMEs. And we have combined the data that these businesses can manage to manage to save. And you see this data not only in the environmental resource category, but also like in monetary terms. So here is the data from yeah, 99 companies that adopted more than 500 different measures when it comes to resource efficiency. And they were able to collectively potentially cost save more than 15 million USD. So as you see, it's quite a large number. So even the resource efficiency directly translates into the also financial efficiency because by being more environmental resource efficient, the businesses can also um, can also decrease the amount of money that is spent to purchase the resources, but also to save this. So create the access to finance opportunities internally in the business. Um, so this is quite, quite impressive. So. So what does the business need to do in order to be resource efficient, right? So that's the first question. Okay, I want to be a resource efficient business. How do I do it? And first thing is basically to start collecting data. The first thing and understanding, okay, where do I stand in terms of resource efficiency, right? I don't even know how my factory, for example, there is no meter for water because it's not regulated in my country that I live in. And then I don't even track how much water do I consume. Or I don't know what what indicators to look at, for example, when I want to track my energy consumption, right? And I can tell you that we've been working with many businesses all around the world, and the insights from our work experience of the, with this coaching, they show that data collection is one of the key challenges that the businesses have in order to understand when they where they stand in terms of their um, uh, their resource consumption. Um, so I, there's something that I would like to hear your feedback on. So I will be opening the floor for discussion very shortly, but just to summarize data collection systems, they can support the businesses to establish baselines, understand where they stand, understand what can be their target consumption level, and then evaluate their performance accordingly. They can also make informed business decisions, produce ESG reports, and also prepare for standards compliance because data is everything. Data is the gold. If you don't collect the data about the consumption of environmental resources, basically you don't know where you stand in terms of the environmental sustainability. But it's understandable. It's not that like easy process and there are many, many indicators to look at. That's why we are here because the green performance toolkit that we have designed and that's the main uh, topic of the session today, exactly targeting, exactly uh, trying to tackle this challenge of data collection that exists uh, in the countries that we work with in developed and least developed countries in different uh, geographies, right? 
Um, so it exactly targets this issue, gives the uh, businesses opportunity to have a systematic approach of data collection, understand where they are, and then enhance their environmental performance. I'll stop here. I would like to hear from you. So uh, there are some guiding questions given on the screen, uh, right? Group discussion. I don't know how many people we have in the screen at and the session. I don't think 45 people. Um, so why don't you share your insights through chat or also by raising a hand and then we will nominate you to also share your feedback. So first of all, if you're a business or business support institution, doesn't really matter. Like tell us what are the key environmental challenges that businesses say businesses face in your respective country. And also what is your experience is working on the topic? You can also share your experience about collecting the environmental resource related data. So rather like really flexible discussion in order to understand also where you're coming from, what are some of the aspects that I mentioned in the presentation relevant for you or not? So please feel free to jump in here. We have around 10 minutes to uh, have this discussion. Okay, I'm monitoring the chat and also looking at the um, screen to see if anyone is raising the hand. Yes, boy. So uh, we uh, restore degraded land with uh, growing bamboo. Uh, and if you then compare uh, the bamboo with traditional uh, wood species, you have about three times the yield of bamboo timber uh, relatively to, to oak or pine. So that is um, yeah how we try to focus on uh, yeah, being resource uh, efficient. Um, and yeah, the challenges uh, that that we have faced uh, mostly is uh, yeah access to to funding to really uh, scale uh, this uh, environmental uh, approach. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, boy. Which country are you based in? <clears throat> uh, currently, I'm in the Netherlands, and we will start the reforestation in Panama. Ah, okay, okay, nice. Thank you for your input. Uh, anyone else would like to react on this, share experience, respond to Boi? I'd like to hear more from you. We have quite a large pool of audience from different countries. So we'd be really interested to hear. Would you agree that data collection on environmental resource consumption is still a challenge in most of the countries? Emanu? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, we can. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. So, um, I'm on from, from, from um, ecotourism Kenya. Uh, so most of the data we collect uh, from the accommodation facilities uh, involves uh, the waste or how they, they see uh, from the accommodation facility. Hello. I guess that is a challenge that they, they do face. Uh, it's a, it's a... Thank you, Manu. As I understand correctly, you also refer to the uh, basically assessing the performance. Is that correct? Yes, we have a program called the Eco Rating Certification Report uh -huh. that we develop of how okay, these well, facilities. Uh -huh. So after after coming up with this report, we're able to come up with a score, either gold, bronze, or silver. So that's how we able to rate their performance in terms of environmental. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Manuel, for that. It's well noted. Um, I see a message in the chat, and I will also write. I will also read it out. So Chimka is writing from Mongolia that I run agritech startup to help rural smallholder farmers to adopt sustainable agriculture. Businesses in Mongolia struggle to measure their impact on environment. Uh, thank you so much, Chimka, for that. 
I'm happy to welcome you. I hope that Green Performance Toolkit can definitely target this challenge. So stay with us till the end of the webinar. Um, so we have a comment from Atim. Um, uh, Fina from Uganda, um, dealing in three seedlings and three seeds. Majorly, we have challenges in climate during dry season. We face challenges watering the plants. Yeah, so water efficiency is an issue, definitely. Um, and then we have Julius Onya from Nigeria saying that data consumption is a major challenge, especially in African countries, and there should be more capacity building on data collection. Yes, yes, indeed, we agree with you and also happy to have this opportunity also to share this um, insight, right, and hear from you and also share uh, solutions from our end. So I'm very happy to welcome you to the webinar. I see one more hand raised. I think we still have time to accommodate the input from Timothy. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, just to collaborate some of the things that have already been mentioned, um, the issue of uh, data collection um, is, is a key challenge uh, because uh, for, for you to um, operate your business in a, at a maximum level, there is need for, for you to make use of uh, existing data um, and if you if you if you refer that to uh, the issues of the environmental challenges, if you refer that to to the aspect of the environment, you see that uh, environmental audit uh, report, which in this part of the country, I'm 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 located currently in the capital city of uh, Nigeria, Abuja. Uh, in Nigeria, there are laws and regulations uh, that guide businesses in terms of uh, environmental compliance. And one of them is that uh, most businesses are being enforced here to have uh, an environmental audit report. And uh, that audit report, uh, as much as it looks at the operational activities of uh, some of the businesses in line with uh, uh, their, their impact or their discharge on the environment, whether it is on the air, or the water, or the soil, or the close-by uh, vegetation. So that environmental audit uh, report is is a key um, is a key uh, regulatory um, instrument that is being pursued. I mean, in fact, there is a special um, national regulation agency that is dedicated to go around the uh, businesses and ask them if they have their environmental audit reports. Well, you, most of the things you notice in that audit report is a uh, lack of data. Uh, let me quickly also speak to the to the last uh, question on the group discussion that I mentioned. Um, uh, they talked about uh, key drivers for adoption of uh, green production practices, and and uh, that that will that will be to mention what you you mentioned earlier in your in your present in the in the session are uh, talking of circular economy i, I think um a circular economy will, will be uh, the, the 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 summarizing key factor that if businesses begin to adopt circular economies the situation whereby uh, they are not after getting new raw materials but they have um, a production system, a production process that uh, that often recycle, um, take back the end life products and bring it back into the system uh, to re-engineer, to remake, to to put back um, the the end life product back to the system. It 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 will reduce the the pressure on going after new uh, raw materials. And of course, by so doing, uh, we, we we ensure the resource efficiency, especially our natural resource, the the, the conservation of our natural resource. So I, I think um, the adoption of the there is no better for me. There is no better uh, green production practice adoption than for most businesses or MSMEs to adopt. Uh, the concept of a circular economy, uh, you know, and of course, discard or refuse to operate with the uh, uh, linear um, uh, economy. Mm -hmm. 
trying mm -hmm. to have my input. Thank you, Timothy. That was very, very, um, uh, very informative. Thank you for giving a good picture of what's happening in uh, Nigeria as well. Your experience definitely very uh, interesting to hear, and I'm happy that we are also aligned, right? And hopefully, this uh, webinar today will somehow help you to tackle the challenge of data collection and also your networks that you're working with. I see also uh, Iggy, Iggy has hand, but for the interest of time, Iggy, if I can ask you to put your comment or suggestion question in the chat, and we will be referring to it later on when we have a Q&A session. Uh, but in the interest of time, we will need to dive into module two at the moment. So if it's okay for you, please feel free to um, share your input in the chat box. So thank you so much everyone for the good this group discussion and also like through, for really confirming and sharing your experience that definitely data collection is one of the key challenge because um, hopefully, and I'm very happy to see that um, Green Performance Toolkit can definitely um, target some of these challenges. So let's go directly into that. So Green Performance Toolkit is an online platform and it's a free of charge tool. It's a public good. So it's gonna be always free of charge for, for anyone, for any user. It's a website, right? And it empowers the businesses to take climate action through resource efficiency. So the uh, categories that are covered by the tool are given on the screen. So you see these are EMS, energy, water, waste, wastewater, air emissions, GHG, chemicals, and soil. And the tool is available in four languages at the moment. So the tool has the following features. So it allows the businesses to run different kind of assessments. So qualitative assessments, um, this is a, a short assessment, also called rapid assessment, because it doesn't take that much time to do it, maybe a five minutes. And it basically targets the general questions that the businesses can need to consider if they are thinking about resource efficiency in a particular category, right? And you see here that we have about 10 questions for the qualitative assessment. Then there is another assessment, which is quantitative. It's based on the figures and it's available at the moment in energy, water, wastewater and waste categories. And there are subcategories under it. So this is where the businesses can collect the data. This is, so the tool gives them a framework and a platform to input their data, to set the targets, and also to understand how they perform compared to the target that they set. So based on this, the companies can produce different kinds of reports that I'll show you later. And these reports they can use for different purposes. And they can also access the improvement checklists. So in addition to assessments, the companies can access to improvement opportunities. Obviously, this tool doesn't replace a person, a coach or an expert on sustainability, but it still provides the businesses with the quick improvement suggestions that they can implement in the business. And there are many learning resources, including videos, training materials, and guides. So the main audience for the tool, these are the businesses, any size of business, it doesn't matter the size, it's more about the maturity level. So businesses that don't have yet data collection system in place, or are not yet starting their journey in terms of sustainability, I think this is the main audience for the, for the tool. And then obviously other uh, stakeholders like government agencies or business support institutions, they can also use the tool because they can embed this tool into their operations, into their programs and services with many different purposes that I will also introduce in a bit. Um, going to the next slide, I would like to say a few words about the value proposition of a tool. So first of all, it helps business to obtain a high level view of their environmental performance in the different categories by doing the assessments. It helps the businesses to identify inefficiency gaps regarding their resource consumption and waste management and understand how far is the company from the target consumption level. Um, the companies can benefit from a structured framework for data collection. 
And also they get the opportunity to identify cost saving potential and um, improve productivity. Then finally, they can also use this data to prepare environmental for environmental standards. It's important to know that we, ITC, we are agency of UN, so we don't provide the users with the certificate or a standard because we are not standards body, but the businesses can use the data analyzed and collected in the tool to go and prepare for standards. So it gives them like a framework to understand what do they need to collect and then how to collect them and then have this availability to download the reports. The toolkit works in a very simple way and I will also show online. Uh, it's available on site, it's available on the, um, on the website. So you see the website here that I will also put in the chat, green performance. Uh, .org. And then once the company is there, they can run the assessments, either qualitative or quantitative, choose the different areas that they're interested in, and then get the results, check the areas for improvement, and um, understand the download the reports as well. Important to note that this tool is not a one-time use because the beauty of the tool and also it's the way it is smart, it could be if the businesses use it more often because then they can have the trends and then they can see how they are performing against the target consumption that they have set. So important to note that all the data that the companies uh, produce and input in the tool, it's confidential. We don't disclose them because this tool is for the companies themselves to work unless they want to disclose, download the report and disclose, it's absolutely fine. But from our end, the data that the company enters is protected by United Nations servers and it's completely confidential. It's good news if you already use any other ITC tool, um, you will be available to log in with the same account in the tool because we are, yeah, we are one ITC, so we have the single sign-on function. Um, Going to the next slide, I would like to quickly show you the assessments, what they look like. It could be like this. This is a small card for each assessment done by a company that I will show you in live mode. For example, this one, it's an assessment. It's an assessment example of a qualitative assessment in the category of energy, environmental management system, I'm sorry. And you see, this is a rapid assessment and mostly yes, no questions. I'll show you in a bit. Then we have an example of a quantitative assessment. And this is something that is based on the figures that I, excuse me, that I mentioned with you. For example, it's in the category of water, water consumption levels. I'll also show you this uh, in a bit. Uh, this is an example of a report that the users can generate in the tool. This report is quantitative. And it's uh, on a multi basis, and it shows the um, the consumption in energy uh, on a multi basis, the costs that are associated with it, and also the target that the company has set themselves to improve the resource efficiency. And then it also shows the percentage between difference facility and the target value. Based on the information that the company enters in the tool, the tool can also calculate the potential cost saving per month, right? And here you see that on the last column. That's another kind of report that um, a business can generate. And as I mentioned, this tool is not one-time use. It's, a, it's the beauty of the tool is if com the company continues to use it, because as you see, for example, this report, it shows the company uh, performance from 2015 to 2021 in the category of energy, the performance, uh, the target, which is a green line, and then a yellow line, I think you see my cursor, it's the difference between the target and the consumption. So as you see, it's very illustrative. This kind of information can be created. 
if the company continues to use the tool over time. And that's another kind of report that is a report of a qualitative assessment because it uh, shows a compilation of measures that are already taken by company and it shows also the improvement areas. I would like to give you quickly uh, feedback from our users. Uh, you can see that on the screen and later on when I share uh, the uh, presentation with you, you can read them. We've been piloting this tool already in five countries. We piloted in Ghana, Kenya, St. Lucia, Bangladesh, and Egypt, and uh, also in Malaysia. And we have gathering the feedback. We're trying to improve and update the tool so it's as possible, as much as customized to the local context, uh, context as possible. Uh, now we reach the time of online demo session. I'll stop sharing my screen and open the website. So as you see, the address is greenperformance.interest.org. Uh, uh, so when you go to this website, this is a, how it opens. That's the landing page. As you see, I'm not logged in here. Um, and when you scroll down, you can select the business that you are in. So the tool is particularly customized to two large sectors, which is textile and apparel and agri-food. And then you can already select the category that you would like to run the assessment, right? Let's see energy, let's see textile category, and we start the assessment. So you see, I'm not logged in and I'm able to perform the assessment already, but this assessment will not be saved because I don't have a user profile yet. So this is important to note. Um, you see, this is a rapid or a qualitative assessment example. And um, most of the questions are yes, no, and they aim to understand in the category of energy, if the company has um, basic systems to track energy consumption, to understand what are the major sources of energy and what are the equipment and the processes that use the most energy. So what could be improvement potential and opportunity there? For example, first question, if the facility identifies all electricity purchased from the operation. Uh, if the company says yes, or if the company says no, you see there is automatic uh, a clear, a possibility hint that is popping up that either provides an um, improvement opportunity, yeah, improvement potential opportunity, or it defines, for example, some of the terms that can be mentioned in the question. So the tool is data collection, but also it's, um, mm, it's a knowledge tool as well, because it definitely helps businesses to increase knowledge in different um, items. Uh, let's just, um, for example, the, this questionnaire also in, aims to understand if the company already has any of the ener renewable energy sources in place. And if not, for example, the company answers no. We have the definition of renewable energy and understanding what is the actual renewable energy. Um, let's just put the, um, here the random um, answers. Um, for example, another question, if the facility tracks processes that consume the most energy, and if the answer is no, there are suggestions how to conduct the audit, right? So there are bullet point suggestions, in the, for example, conduct an external energy audit or introduce the submitters in both department or equipment level, introduce IoT-based real-time energy monitoring system, etc. So as I mentioned, the tool doesn't replace a coach, but it does give some suggestions already for the companies to improve their uh, performance. Um, let's just, um, I would like to complete the assessment. So as you see, it's quite big. This one really gives like a big uh, picture overview of how the company is performing in a particular category. And it also gives them reference, give the company's reference to the um, to the um, other templates or learning materials that they can the companies can use in order to enhance their performance. For example, on the question if the health facility has set baseline values for energy consumption, it the suggestion 
it pops up and it mentions that energy baseline is basically a total energy from the source for the year divided by total production units for the reporting year. And then more information on baselining and target setting is available in this document. So as you see, this it's also like knowledge enhancement tool. And maybe some of the information already are known by the companies in energy because energy is something that everyone consumes and um, there is, I think, more awareness around it. But it could be that in other categories, uh, it's not available, for example, under GHG, under chemicals and soil, and would be something interesting to look from the company's perspective as well. So as I complete this assessment, I can click here complete, and then I will be able to print the report, you see, or I would be able to go back. And if I go back, then there is an op option for me to create a profile. So what I showed you is without a profile, it's very basic, and you don't even have a, like a, a menu option here. But important to have a profile because then the companies can continuously work on the tool and input the data and generate reports, right? So I click here, login. Uh, and as you see, it's a popping up ITC window. So if you have already the, um, the uh, account, you will be able to uh, log in. Otherwise, just give me a second as I'm opening the, um, my login page. Um, you'll be able to make single sign-on. Otherwise, it's very easy to sign up. I will show you. It's basic questions about your business, right? So, okay, I'm sharing my screen again. Uh, okay, now you should be able to see. So, first thing I log in is this personal dashboard that is popping up. And... Um, here it's a quick guide like the website is guiding me what to do it explains here what the tool is about it's basically something what i already mentioned so i will not read it i click on it and it says company information this is what information is required for you during registration it's made mainly your company name your operations which sector are you working in where are you based and also there are some other questions about business generation, but this is optional question. So you see if you need to respond them or not respond. So that's a basic company information. And then here you have this menu, which is these categories that I mentioned, right? The assessment categories, and these are eight. EMS, energy, water, waste, water, waste, air emissions, GHG and chemicals. You can perform the assessment. You can choose whichever is interesting for you. It's not like mandatory any of them, so to say. Then we have a tab for reports. This is particular. This is a dedicated tab to reports, so that if you would like to access the reports quickly, this is where this is where you go. Reports and analysis tab. And then we have checklists. This checklist is available. It's also another kind of questionnaire, which has more detailed improvement suggestions than just a other questionnaire. So I think that's why it is important here. We have resources tab. So this is for learning. There are many, many materials, templates that you can use for your improving for the environmental performance, quite a variety of the materials. Then we have feedback tab where you can submit your feedback and finally log out. So as you see, this is very, um, easy to navigate. It's not a rocket science. You have a menu on the left side, and then you choose what, 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 what you'd like to do. If you would like to um, choose a language, you come here, uh, you press on English, and then you choose your language. So far, it's available in uh, four languages, right? So let's uh, explore a bit. Let's go to the category of EMS. Here, I have done already the assessment. That's why I have this small card here. Right, and here I can uh, either view the details or edit the item or download the, or delete the item. So, and it also shows the percentage of um, the percentage of the assessment that I did. I did this 100%, that's why it shows 100% completion. Also shows the level or the type of the assessment. So let's go to just to see the details. Um, the category of um, EMS, it is about understanding if the company has in place 
the environmental management system, whether it is existing, whether it is shared with the employees and whether this is implemented. Um, and you see again here many improvement possibility hints popping up where the companies can learn more about the environmental management system. Um, then, for example, let's go to category of water. I have many, many assessments here. Not well, not many, but well. The first one is in a rapid one or the qualitative one. The second one is um, quantitative one. And uh, let's go here uh, and see. I would like to also show the quantitative assessment. So once you open the quantitative assessment, you can input the data on a monthly or on a yearly basis. And you choose the company selects by uh, by itself, like which whichever option would you like to choose. And if you choose monthly, then you will need to enter the data for um, each month, right? So the questions that are asked mainly, it's about uh, monthly total costs in local currency, consumption of water, and then target. So target is something that the company set themselves and they can learn what is the benchmark in the geography or in the sector that they're operating in and they set the target accordingly. Then we have another uh, tab, which is about the machines. So all the machines are using water and then indicating their um, respective consumption. And here it's just an example of a machine. And that's it. So if the company has the data, it's very easy to do this assessment because it's just inputting the data here. I think the main challenge is having the data, right? But by understanding what is uh, the data required, the companies can already track the data. For example, let's go to energy. Energy has subcategories. It has electricity consumption per machine. It has electricity from grid power consumption. And it also has fuel, diesel, and gasoline consumption. You see, for example, this assessment is from 2021. It's a quantitative assessment, and we can look into the details. Um, this is about the fuel, right? So this company has done the monthly analysis, enter the monthly costs, monthly fuel consumption, and also the target value. So this is the information that the company is entering. And now uh, another tab is like basically to help the company understand um, what are the equipments that are using this fuel into the uh, operations um, and how much also is compute how much also fuel is um, is uh, consumed by that. Um, another important one is about electricity consumption uh, from grid power, right? This company, for example, did a monthly yearly one. That's why it's a bit of um, it's a bit more uh, generic. But let's go to monthly one, and then you will see monthly costs in local currency, energy consumption in KWH, and then target electricity consumption. Once the company enters this information. They have available, the tool calculates itself the um, percentage between the consumption and the target, and also suggests the uh, cost saving opportunity in terms of money. For example, let's go to the reports tab, and here we will be able to see what do I mean. So once you go through the reports, you have three options. The first one is a rapid assessment or qualitative assessment report. The second one is quantitative, and the third one is progress over years. So let's see rapid assessment for here, and you can select the categories that you did. As you see here, all the categories are displayed, and those ones that are active indicate that the company has done the assessment in this field, right? For example, that select energy, and I can already access the report that I did. So I click on it, and I access it. For quantitative one, that's something that is a bit more detailed, right? So here, the company can select a year that they have done the assessment. As you see that this company has been active over years. Let's choose 2023. And then 
select the available areas because this company did, for example, assessment in electricity, energy, and the one in waste, right? Let's look at waste, for example. Uh, you see here is the option of download the report. Otherwise, it's also applicable here. And this particular company, they did the waste assessment for four categories, categories of paper, plastic, textile, and sludge waste, because it's a textile company. They entered the data on waste generation for each of the category. Um, they entered the target, disposal cost per year. Um, and then you see the tool calculates cost saving opportunities here. And also the difference between the target value and, uh, and the actual consumption. Um, this is something that is also could be possible to be downloaded either in PDF or in Excel so that the company can use based on its purposes, right? We can have this similar assessment for electricity because we did the assessment in this category here. And the third kind of report is possible to be uh, generated is the um, progress over years. Give me a second. So progress over years is something that I have shown you in the presentation as well. Uh, once we select an area that we would like to see, for example, here in this case, electricity, we can see an interactive graph um, from 2020 to 2023, how has been the company's consumption of electricity from grid power? And we see blue columns is our consumption. And then we have green line, which is target. And then we have yellow, which is the um, difference between the target and between the um, consumption. This could be also downloaded. We can also see the same graph for waste and for any other categories that we have completed the assessment. Wastewater, yeah, I don't have the assessment here. So this is the kind of report that could be done. And then I would like to show you as well checklist. So this is another kind of questionnaire that has more improvement suggestions based on the answers of the company. And it's available in mainly three areas, but under each there are different areas. For example, under energy, you can have you see so many different areas that you can have the understanding of how to improve the assessment. And this is something that is really more detailed and uh, it's a good learning tool. Then finally, resources tab I want to show you because it's very detailed as well. It's according to each area. There are some general resources, but also a lot of under each category, for example, EMS, you can see this video here, access the environmental best practices, energy, different materials, reports, water, risk analysis, water benchmarking, wastewater, you have waste, air emissions, PHG. Here there is a reference of the calculator, for example because the tool doesn't calculate itself at this stage, but it gives a reference to the calculator if the companies would like to further use. Then we have chemicals, and I think that's it. So as you see, it's a tool for a company for themselves to not only track and enhance their performance, but also learn more about the topic. So it has like both purposes. And finally, feedback. We continuously collect the feedback from the users to further improve the tool and then FAQ. So this is the tool in a nutshell. I would like to also show you perhaps the company information form just quickly. So this is the information that is basically asked, right? So what is the name of a company, email, uh, basic company information. And you see the rest of the questions, they are not, um, mandatory, so the company decides themselves what kind of information to put. Um, so that's it, I think. My very quick presentation about the tool, as you see, it's very easy to navigate, but as much as I show, I think it still will not compare to the um, experience that you can have if you test the tool by yourself. 
That's why in the second part of the webinar, we will have um, interactive exercise that we can all perform in the tool. So let's have a five minute break now. I'll go back to my presentation uh, because I will display the um, presentation. Here I am. So uh, let's have a five minute break. So we can come back at 11, um, 11, I think 13 or 11, 15, I think I'll just put here. 11.13, uh, and then we will be able to perform the exercise. In the meantime, I would like to ask my colleagues, uh, Brian, if you're still here, uh, please um, share, forward again the case study to the participants because we will be referring to that case study. So if you can forward them by email, if there are any new participants, I think that will be great. Um, because once we come back from the break, we will be doing, we will be going to the Green Performance Toolkit, each of you, and conducting this exercise. So I'm just going to repost here the tool um, URL. Feel free to already take your break. And then uh, we will, we will um, see you again in five minutes. And then uh, Tamari, I shared the the case study. Is it the case study that you're referring to? Because I shared it with all the participants. Yes, exactly. It's this one, yeah. I don't know if there are any new participants that might not have access to it. If not, it's okay. If everyone has, it's fine. Okay. Oh, Tarango from Bangladesh. I, I know you so well from She Trades Commonwealth Project. Very happy to see you, Kohinoor, here. You cannot listen in. I'm sorry. I, yeah. But uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. Very happy to see some of the names that I, yeah, some of the businesses that I work with as well. Okay, everyone, so I'll stop here. Let's take this well deserved break and I come back uh, in four minutes now. <laughs>
Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Let's slowly come back. It's the thing with the virtual sessions, you never know who is there and who is not, even though I don't see your, I see your um, in the list, but hopefully you're back to the computer. Could you just give me a sign or uh, write something in the chat or I don't know, thumbs up so that I know that you're back? I'm back. You're back. Okay, great. Hello. Hello, everyone. Okay, welcome. Welcome back. I'm very happy that you are with us and you find the webinar engaging. So super, super nice. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Okay, so time for you to be engaged. Now we will go to exercise. So um, we have a case study. It's a Taste of Tea. It's an imaginary company that wants to optimize the energy use. So we will be doing an exercise in energy area and we will be creating breakout rooms. I think because we have um, 35 participants, makes sense to make uh, about four groups or four to three groups. And each group will have an assignment. So there will be two groups that will be working on a qualitative assessment. And there will be one group, two groups that will be working on a quantitative assessment. And I and my colleagues, I think, will be part of the different groups and just to make sure that we we'll facilitate the conversation. So based on the, so we will need to create, we will need to open the toolkit on one side and open the um, case study on another side. So based on the information that is given in the case study, we will be completing the assessment in the tool. Does that sound clear to you? Before we go into breakout rooms. Yes. Thunder. Sounds clear. Okay, perfect. Great, great. Yes, question, tell me. Uh, if you, we have, we have to, we don't have to sing in with, with our ITC profile. Is it okay? Because if not, our company or our projects will be like on the system. As you wish. So if you are not uh, like, it's the same. No, for, for, for example, to profile. If you run the rapid assessment, you don't need to have a profile. You can run without it. But if you need quantitative one, you need to create a profile. But you can also create a, like a fictitious company, you no? Know? And then just do the, perform the exercise. It's for you to get familiar with the tool. It's only about that. So you don't have to complete all the, everything that basically for the crea profile creation, just your email, and then you need to come to the tool. So I'll go to the group that will be doing quantitative one and then also provide support there. Okay, so I don't know if I can create the groups already here. Let me see, breakout rooms, yes, I can. Okay, everyone, so I'm creating the groups. Uh, we will have about uh, 20 to 25 minutes to do this exercise. And it's the idea is to, for you to test the tool. So it doesn't matter if you 100% complete or 90% complete. Whatever you do, it's already good because it helps you understand how it works, right? So 32 people that create three rooms include co-hosts. Okay, perfect. I'll see you there. Tamari, um, I'm going. I'm going to stay in the main room and um, redistribute if people are not joining. Mm -hmm. um, so um, you get, just go to your quantitative group, and mm -hmm. um, I'm helping those who have difficulties in um, mm -hmm. ass assessing their groups. If it's okay for you. Yes, of course. Um, of course, yes, no problem. Okay, you stay there, direct people, and I'll go from exactly. one to another one. Okay, cool. Exactly. So those who are not um, have any received any breakout notifications. Um, please let me know so I can reassign you for you to enter your correct um, breakout session.
So those who are still in the waiting room, do you want to get reassigned? Did the message pop up uh, to you? Um, otherwise, I'm going to reassign you so that you get the notification to join the breakout sessions. So let me know. Hi, Neo. We are currently in breakout sessions. Um, so I'm going to assign you to one and feel free to, to enter. Okay, that's fine. I kept getting cut off on and off. So, so no worries. <laughs> I'm going okay. to also resign you three times. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Hi, Abu Bakr. We are currently in breakout sessions. So I'm going to assign you to one and, ah, you're still connecting to the audio. So um, for those who are newly joining Mugabe and Abu Bakr, we are currently in breakout sessions. So I'm going to assign you to a breakout session and yeah, you will receive the link for the sessions in a few seconds and just feel free to enter the rooms and to participate in the group sessions.
Hi, Sarah too. We are currently in breakout sessions. Um, I'm going to assign you to one. So please feel free to join them. Hi, Timothy. Hi. Um, sorry. Out earlier, but my device is uh, charged up now, and I'm. No problem. We are still in breakout sessions, um. So, I'm just assigning you. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, so we are coming back from the room, from two rooms. So in the end, we had two rooms. Um, one room was doing the qualitative assessment in the tool, and another one was doing a quantitative assessment in the tool. And I'm super, super proud of everyone because you guys really showed a lot of like a, um, a lot of enthusiasm, also like the skills to really move quickly around around the case study and get the main data and put in the tool and also navigate the tool very easily. So I'm very happy about it. Um, I think while we still have, I think some more participants to come in, they will, yeah, they will be here in 10 seconds. <laughs> in the meantime, perhaps we can already assign a volunteer to um, a volunteer to uh, share the findings of the, um, of the uh, quantitative exercise. So, Boy, would you like to go ahead? <laughs> yes, the, the quantity is us. Uh, yeah. I will share my uh, screen that everybody can see what we have made. Yes. Um, so first of all, we have filled in uh, all the data uh, using the energy tab, and then we had new assessment. And then from here, we could uh, select the electricity from the grid in power consumption. So here you can see it from 2021, 2022, and 2023. Uh, we have filled in uh, the, the targets, uh, uh, the cost, uh, and the uh, consumption. And after we have filled it in, you can go to uh, our reports and analysis, and then you can look on this tab, progress over the years. And then you get this very helpful graph where you again see the target, what was about 2,360,000 kilowatt hour, and uh, that stays the same. And this, the blue is our actual consumption. And then you can see that the difference versus the target is going down with the years. So we are improving our energy consumption. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was a very good presentation. Um, thank you, Boy, and also the rest of the group, because I've seen the group spirit. Everyone was really working together and really putting the input, so I'm very happy. Quickly giving the word to Julia, if you want to share also your experience in navigating the tool, you want to say a few words, because you've been also facilitating this exercise on the qualitative assessment. Okay, so, uh, sorry, yes. So what we do, boys, boy tell very like in a very good way how to make. So here we put a rapid assessment. Here is is it complete? So and the and the results are here. So after we we did, we have this report, uh, all the measures on how how we answer the questions and the improvement areas. Uh, it's short, but it's okay. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I don't know what more would would you could we mention? Maybe we can. I can show. I oh, know. Okay. It's fine, Julia. It was just to give an okay. idea of that you managed well. You navigated. You were able to connect information from a company to a tool. So if you represent a company. I think these skills would help you as well to do your own assessment on the real time data and understand, OK, how do I perform and how do I navigate this information in the tool? I would like to quickly show my screen again because I would like to go back to the presentation portal. Uh, can you see? Can Let me see if you can see. Yes, I think you can see the screen. So I would like to show you a quick overview of the application of the tool in the business operations because I understand most of you have your own business or uh, you know uh, uh, or uh, like entrepreneurship right so how you can use this tool into your business operations first of all you can gain insights into the business environmental stewardship at a glance right because we have seen the report it is really in a quick way showcasing what are the measures that you take as a business what are the measures that you can be further improved right in case of a qualitative assessment 
In case of a quantitative assessment as well, it gives you a big overview of the performance over the years and how do you perform according to the target, right? And also you can use this tool to understand the inefficiency gaps in your systems when it comes to the different environmental resource consumption. And then you can have this framework, right, to collect the data because sometimes the businesses find it difficult even to have this data collection strategy in place. Where do I start? What do I collect? How to do, right? So this gives you a, like a structure framework also gives the opportunity to identify opportunities for cost savings because then this will be linked to resource saving. And then of course, do some work. If your business, for example, already would like to obtain some sort of um, certification or uh, some sort of uh, environmental standard, you can gather this data to use this data for, you know, to present in the certification body. And then you can also use this for communications purposes. If you would like to communicate your business performance with your target audience, with the buyers, with the B2C consumers that you, you know, you can show that actually throughout the years, I've been using this tool, I've been setting myself a target and I've been improving my performance in the different categories. You can play with this data and also use it for your own, uh, uh, for your own uh, communication purposes for social media and so on. So definitely like many different uh, different aspects of the application. Um, going to the next slide quickly, I will just very briefly touch base on the uh, deployment opportunities of the tool. If you are a member of a business support institution, you can hold the awareness raising training and webinar sessions for your members to let them know that this is something that is happening and to increase the understanding and also support the ecosystem in your own country that you operate with. So if you are a member of a business support institution, I encourage you to send us an email afterwards so we can deep dive into the collaboration, potential collaboration opportunities that we can explore. Um, going to the next slide, I would like to start wrapping up this session because I would like to spare about uh, 10 minutes for question and answer. Also to have some interaction from my colleague, Joanna here, and also to discuss the next steps, right? So after this webinar, we will share the all training materials with you. We will share the presentation, some of the other guidelines that will help you to navigate in the tool. Uh, please continue using the tool, test it, play with it, you know, conduct the assessments. Anytime you need a support, feel free to drop us an email. I'm just gonna put this email address in the chat. So we'll be helping you with any kind of question you have, whether it's a technical question or IT related question. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. And then if you are also a member of a business support institution and would like to see how you can deploy the tool into your institution, feel free to also engage with us so we can further discuss this. Uh, last but not least, I will put here the evaluation form chat. So um, please share your feedback by completing the form. I think that would be super helpful for us to improve our trainings. So feel free to uh, put this information. I'll give a quick word to Joanna and also participants already think about the questions that you would like to answer because we would like to hear from you as well. Thank you, Tamari. Um, really interesting. I hope you had a great session and um, yeah, I will use my two minutes now shortly to um, uh, share my screen and to, can you see something? Yes, right? Um, yes. Perfect. <laughs> and to just um, announce some opportunities we have here in the Yale community. Um, so some of you already now know this, but just to raise your awareness again. So we're going to have a master. We are at the moment have a masterclass series in collaboration with Visa, and um, in two weeks we already have our last. Um, episode of this and it's on how to deliver e-commerce experience of tomorrow so please sign up i'm going to put also in all those links i'm talking about now in the chat so you just can click there and register um 
then the next thing is that we always offer the year commun within the year community, um, which is basically a co community, a global community for young entrepreneurs to have these learn and connect sessions where we ex um, share experiences and have just a little bit networking sessions. So we are going to have a next one in June. And when you register um, in by clicking on the link or scanning the QR code, you will get notified as soon as we have a fixed date. Um, and we are looking forward to see as many um, of you as possible. And last but not least, um, so the Year community is this um, community for young entrepreneurs with mentorship, with e-learning courses, a lot of different opportunities are there. Um, we know it's a little complicated in the beginning um, to look through the community. So we have those onboarding sessions where we just take our time and go step by step how to really use this platform and how to register there and so on. So also there, we are going to have a new onboarding session probably in June. If you just register, we, you will get notified as soon as a date is fixed. And yes, Thank you for your attendance and I'm passing it back now to Tamari who will lead the last final Q&A sessions um, which you might have for the Green Performance Toolkit. So thank you Tamari and back to you. Thank you Joanna. Um, so uh, feel free to also share your cameras. It's very nice to see your faces, especially in the online system that we don't see. I think lovely to see everyone and uh, feel free to share your input and uh, questions here that you might have. So over to you, uh, participants. <laughs> if so you have business, uh... Yes, uh, just if you have business, like would you see a, like a use of for you for this tool? Is it something that could apply to you? Yes, for sure. Uh, it, it, could I ask you something, uh, Tamara? Because it, it, within the tool, um, it then shows your total consumption of energy, for example. But uh, as a business, we're, we're also uh, growing. Uh, and is there an, an also a way to look at the data uh, based on the amount of revenue you have generated? Or, or for us, it would be energy consumption by amount of hectares uh, reforested so that you really get a, a better overview of every unit of production, how many energy that is consuming instead of only total amount. Because if you put a, a target uh, of 2 million, for example, um, or you see your consumption going up, you think, oh, no, I'm do not doing very well, but relative to the amount of revenue or amount of hectares reforested, it might be a, a good number. So the question, is there a way of making that difference? Mm -hmm. Good question. I'm not aware because your business is very particular, no? So um, I didn't have a, like a, uh, I think it's, a, it's good to test and see. I cannot answer on this question now because your business has very particular case. So it would be good to check that. I know that, for example, for textile and apparel and agribusiness companies, there is like really the classification of energy on the different aspects, but I'm not mm -hmm. able to fully give you an answer. So it would be good if I check it offline afterwards and also you check and then we reconvene and uh, yeah, uh, make, an, make an agreement on that. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else would like to share something? I would like to use, but I like in my in our startup, but maybe it's like you realize that you don't measure many things. So in the, at the first time, you have to assume that you don't measure and then start keep like keep doing it. And also some of the quantitative questions are like uh, maybe difficult to know, at least here in Argentina. It's like, well, I don't know, some of the information is not always disposable so will be a like a work to do but it's it is interesting and i yeah and, and yeah i think that it's a 
good habit to have each year at least. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's actually a very good point because it's understandable. Like uh, sometimes the businesses, um, they are not aware even what to track. No, that's why even doing the rapid assessment gives you an idea what are the things that you need to pay attention to. So that's why I think I encourage you to go through the different categories and quickly do rapid assessment. It only takes like three to five minutes and understand the indicators that you need to look and also check out the indicators for quantitative assessment so that you understand what to collect, what information, right? So I understand that some of the things there might be gaps, but you can already start with understanding what are the gaps and how to complete these gaps later on. So hopefully you will also use this as a, as a learning opportunity. Um, I see a question from Emmanuel in the chat. How can you incorporate the organization achieving the SDGs? Um, yeah, good question. So SDGs is something that I think we as a global community is trying to really make our own effort to do that. And it doesn't matter like how big his business is or even if we are working on an entrepreneurial level, we can still make baby steps to make our contribution to SDGs. And there is SDG 12, which is about uh, sustainable consumption and production. So I think that if you activate resource efficiency in your business, that you are directly contributing to SDG, right? So I think that is something that definitely connected to each other. I see uh, if there is anyone else would like to say something. We have three more minutes. Um, otherwise, um, we can also uh, wrap up the session. I understand two hours sitting in front of computer could be also quite a challenge. So thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> it was very engaging. <laughs> Great, great. I'm happy. Okay, so I mean, this is the like the end of the session, but obviously not end of our uh, relationship that just started, I would say, right? But we stay there, we stay online, please feel free to play with the tool, or get to know the functionalities. And then if in case of any questions, reach out to us, and we'll be happy to support you understand what you do. And you know, also like to, you know, ask any uh, answer any questions that you might have. Uh, I would like to thank you a lot for uh, our partners, yeah, community, my colleagues for arranging this. We have very good collaboration between the different divisions of ITC to really share knowledge, information among our network. So I really appreciate this platform for giving us the opportunity also to make a presentation. And thank you so much for, for that as well. And um, I wish you a good day and good afternoon, rest of the day, depending where you are. And hope to see you again soon. Bye. Likewise. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you too. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.